Well, welcome to chapter four. We're in section 4.1. Uh, so chapter four is about bivariate data, scatter plots, correlation, linear regression, um, describing two variable data sets. So for each individual, we collect two values. That's so called bivariate data. So here we go, bivariate data, scatter plus correlation, um, happening as we speak. Uh, two values, usually listed as an ordered pair, x, y, are collected from each individual. A scatter plot is the graph of the points whose coordinates are x, y, graphed on a coordinate system. Okay, so you might be collecting information like, um, maybe it's uh, from a, a company, salary and years at the company. So maybe the salary is $35,000. Maybe the years is 10 years. So we have a pair of values, a pair of numbers to go together. Maybe we'll do thousands, 35, 10. So this is, thousand dollars. This one here is year. So they have units, but ordinarily you don't put units on an ordered pair. So we could collect a lot of that information from the employees. What's your salary? How many years have you been at the company? And we want to examine that data by making a scatter plot. So we're going to graph these points. But before we graph them, we have to decide the predicting value Ordinarily, we're trying to predict one thing from another, and the predicted value, the predictor value is called the explanatory variable, the predicted value is called the response variable. We put the explanatory variable on the horizontal axis, so we make a, a coordinate system like this. And then we want to think, we're thinking, I would guess, that number of years would help predict salary. So if you've been there a long time, you probably make more money. So the number of years you might be at a company probably starts at zero. So it makes sense to start this at zero here. And then maybe it goes up to 30 years. Like that. And what we want to do when we make this, we want to make sure it looks like a number line. So this distance, zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, are supposed to be the same. I didn't do such a good job. They're supposed to be the same size. If you make them different sizes, then the things we do to make graphs uh, will look different depending on how you've, how you've assigned the sizes of the units to different parts of the graph. And things you draw won't look like lines anymore. They're supposed to be lines, stuff like that. So we make sure we use consistent size units whenever we do a graph. So and this is gonna be labeled years. And it's the horizontal axis. We think years predict salary. Now on the vertical axis, it's gonna be salary. Well, salary, you probably don't wanna start it at zero you probably want to start it at like the lowest possible salary, which might be something like minimum wage. And what is that? Oh, I don't know. I would think that would be, uh, let's see, uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's $9 an hour. There's uh, maybe 173 hours per month and maybe 12 months. So maybe, uh, Salary is at least around 20,000. Okay, so I'll put 20. Well, maybe I'll make 15 here. So we have space in case we need it. And then it might go up as high as 50. So we need uh, about seven fives here, I think. Didn't quite make it. Uh, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 45, maybe 50 up here. I don't know what kind of company it is. Yeah. And this is, um, can I write on there? Maybe I'll fit. Okay. Thousand dollars. Okay. And then we're going to plot this point. It says at 10 years, so we go 10 for the horizontal axis like this. We want 35,000. So I guess that. Now that I figured it out, we probably want to list it as x is 10, y is 35, because we're used to the first one being horizontal. 
and the second one being vertical, or x and y traditionally. So there we go. We've managed to find it, and we make it out there. So making a scatter plot amounts to collecting the data in ordered paired fashion, and then figuring out which, which one is explanatory in response, and maybe reorganizing it if you need, because explanatory should come first, response next, because x is the horizontal axis, y the second one for, for ordered pairs. The first one's horizontal, the second one's vertical. That's the tradition. So we flipped that around, and we plotted 10, 35, made a dot. And you would do that for all the employees at the company. Uh, so maybe someone just started, they're making 20,000, they would show up there. Maybe someone's been there 30 years, they're making 50,000, it would show up there. And then pretty soon, maybe a pattern would emerge, you know, of how the salaries are predicted by number of years in the company. Naturally, there's different kinds of jobs, so a number of years doesn't do the whole job of predicting. But that's how a scatter plot works. It's just an initial graph of the data to help you decide um, what patterns seem to be present. Uh, and maybe it's not the best way to do it all the time. Uh, what's the, what are the points here? Oh, here we go. A uniform scale on each axis. So on the vertical axis, same way. If that's five units, that same distance is five units all the way along. And one point for individual, so each dot represents a person. And then axis, the axes often do not cross at zero, zero. So this position here doesn't have to be the origin. You might be used to that from drawing graphs in math classes, but actually for many graphs, the zero, zero is not part of the region of interest. And so you don't even bother trying to get zero, zero on the graph. If you tried to do that here, you'd see you get a very interesting graph where most of the graph would be way up in the top corner. And really, what's the point of doing that? There isn't one. So there we go. We're on to page two. So we have some uh, example graphs. And the, what we're trying to do is to use the graphs to make a guess and ask about how accurately we might be able to predict the, y, the vertical component from the horizontal component of a, of a data point. So let's try to pick, this is weight and height. Now for some reason, weight is trying to, what do we say here? Horizontal axis is the predictor. We're trying to predict height from weight. Why would you do that? No idea. But that's the way the graph is drawn. So uh, for whoever made this graph up, they were thinking they wanted to use height to predict weight. I'm sorry, weight to predict height. Um, maybe they're working for the government somewhere in the army. They have all these ways of uh, deciding what size equipment they need to get for their, their recruits. Maybe they figured they could just weigh them all and that could help them figure out what the heights are and then they know what size clothes to buy, etc. Who knows? And a lot of times what happens when you make scatter plots is you'll see most of the values fall in like a big old ellipse like this. And there's some values that are outside that, um, but not very many. So if you're trying to, trying to make a prediction, you're going to use that ellipse to help you. So here with 100, which is here, you might say, I'll, I'll pick that value for 100. Weight equals 100. Height equals, now what is that there? That's 60, about 63. OK. And then if we do 150, that's here. Now, there's a pretty wide range, but we tend to just kind of pick the middle there as a guess of what we predict on average. And we come across here, maybe that's uh, 69. And then over here is 210. There's this one dot here. I think there's one dot there. Um, I made a mess. Then I think there's one dot there. So here's 210, right about here. Now there's one dot there, that's for sure, but it's not clear to me, since we haven't seen values up here, where these will end up. So that's just one dot. So maybe if you collected more information, you would see things like this show up in addition to the one dot that we've got there. So since we don't have a lot of uh, data, height is hard to estimate. since not much data has 
weight around uh, 210. And you know, for example, maybe you think, does this pattern continue forever? That's already uh, six foot three. You know, there's plenty of uh, people that weigh over 200 pounds that are not even six foot tall. So we have the feeling this thing uh, it might start off like this until you hit a certain height, like six feet, then it might start to level off. That the extra weight doesn't correspond to necessarily extra height. It's just extra weight that could happen. So we don't know because we don't have a scatter plot for that. So, so since we don't have, see much data out there, we can't predict very well. well and this is called uh, uh, predicting this way using existing data is called extrapolation. Extrapolation. So that would be extending the idea that this ellipse probably comes out like this when we don't know it does, and that would be called extrapolation. All right. Off we go. Here is uh, some data collected from one of my classes. We often collect information from the class. Uh, down here is hand size in centimeters measured by seeing how far you can spread your fingers like this comfortably. Those numbers are like between 16 and 25 centimeters. And then they would take their shoe off and set their foot on a, so they just have a tape measure that's been Xeroxed for this. And they can also use it for their foot. So all those things can be thrown away. The, they get dirty in the process, you just put them in the trash when you leave. And from each individual, you get a hand and foot measurement, and then you make dots. Now here, the dots are in different colors. The red ones are the men, and the blue ones are the women. So I see sort of two different patterns here. Here's like men, and then here maybe is more like women. Seems like there's a slightly different pattern to the two, but we don't have that much data. Uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in this value. Here's somebody with a really small foot and a sort of small hand, I guess, but they're not following the pattern. I'm not sure what they did. They might have measured their foot wrong. Not clear. We'd have to go back and track that down. It could be right though. It's not that big a difference. It's a couple of three centimeters. It's not like they have a foot that's only two inches long, but still. Let's try to predict the foot size for a 20 centimeter hand male. So that's, males are the red guys. Here's 20 centimeters here. So up here we might say men might be there. And so that height might be halfway between 20. So there's two and a half units there. So that's one and a quarter. So 26.25. And 20 centimeter female might be here. Now it's more like maybe 23 centimeters. I come across this way. And then a 16 centimeter female. Well, we're up against the same problem. Uh, no values near hand equals 16. So not clear on foot size. I probably would guess maybe here, but since we haven't collected enough data to really to tell, it's sort of hard back here even because there's not enough data, but once you get to the edges, there's even less. And I, I think in this case, I might have been tempted to say that number looks like it might be okay. And that would be uh, maybe uh, eight, this is two and a half here too, right? So maybe, maybe two, maybe that's two and a half, halfway would be one and a quarter, maybe one and a half away. So that'd be like 19, but maybe 19 centimeters. Okay, so still extrapolation, but doesn't feel as bad as it did before. They were way outside the range of things we could think about. And then we have to think about, well, physically, uh, just because you have a small size hand, is that something that happens? or the other things don't change? Or do you think smaller size hands goes with smaller size person overall? So probably smaller size foot. Maybe it's a younger person. We don't know what's happened here. So um, smaller and smaller hands, 
probably go with smaller and smaller feet, but apparently it's not that strong a connection based on the data. But maybe it should be less than you would have predicted over here, which you have some idea what it is. And we're guessing, okay. And finally, I hope it's final, huh? maybe not. Is it? It is. We have our final graph. It says, can elevation predict mean annual temperature in a given state? The state is Nevada. Here's our data. It's fairly strong, fairly easy to predict, say, uh, temperature of elevations like 1,000 meters. Those are meters. Yeah. So we go here. Maybe we have to predict that value, maybe the 15 degrees. Like that. Um, and the, the range of values at that elevation is pretty narrow um, wherever you are. So it's plus or minus maybe two degrees. That's pretty good. It's not like it's got it all over. But we do have a problem. If we go down to zero meters, again, we're in trouble because I don't know how elevation impacts annual temperature. Seems like it might be curving off this way, but there's almost no data because it almost this is like Death Valley, I think, out here. Is that in Arizona? Sorry, Nevada. Is Death Valley in Arizona? I don't know. Well, there's some low-level deserts in Nevada. They're really annual temperature 20 degrees is hot all the time. But maybe there's some kind of limit to how hot it can get, right? Maybe it's pretty hard to get hotter than annually 20 degrees C, no matter what you do. So if you were to extend this up here and say, well, I think it's 25 degrees, maybe no place on Earth is really 25 degrees because heat radiates off the planet pretty easily at night and you just can't keep that temperature. No idea. Uh, so we say uh, we can't use the data to make a reliable uh, prediction here um, and that because we're too far from values I've observed and there seems to be a tendency for things to level off here, but that could just be random stuff. If we collected more data, we might see a pattern. And 2,500 meters, oh dear, that's here. Same issue, high elevation. This connection of elevation with temperature, it might not continue up to higher elevations because maybe there's different uh, different kinds of plants at higher elevations and maybe it's easier for heat to be retained or reflected at higher elevations than at lower elevations, and that would make the mean annual temperature different. I don't know, because I don't see anything here. And chances are, in Nevada, there's nothing much above, these are meters, right? Much above uh, 6,000 feet, oh well, it'd be more than that even. Whatever this would be in 2,000 meters is pretty high. Maybe there's nothing like 2,500 meters anyway, so there are no such things. But if there were, what do you think the temperature would be? Same problem, uh, same answer here. Same answer. Can't predict reliably. Okay, so there's some uh, scatter plots so you can see why you might look at them and see what you can draw some conclusions about. What we'll be doing here in this section eventually, um, in this chapter, is if things look linear like this, we're going to find the equation of the line that fits this, and we'll try to interpret the slope and intercept, see what they mean in these situations. Uh, and we've covered them all, and I can stop recording. Here we go.